Very good. Okay, so tonight, first of all, thank you for joining me. Uh, Dan here, of course, always a pleasure. Uh, we do this for education purposes and for engagement purposes, obviously. Um, and tonight, I'm actually um, going to do something that I don't typically do. As uh, Typically, when I speak, I talk about actual core stuff related to investing, like uh, rentals and flips and analyzing and everything that is really very related to the core aspects of real estate investing. And once in a while, I try to take a topic that's a little bit off. It's not off completely, but it's not core analyzing rental properties or looking at flips or doing, buying at the auction and stuff like that. It's more uh, a correct uh, 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 setup for us to, you know, to do, uh, uh, to invest all together mindset. So I call it the critical ing ingredients to, you know, for your success. And this is something, if you follow that, it will probably help you, not probably, will help you be more successful. Um, I'm sure you will be, be, you'll be able to relate to a lot of the things that I, that I talk about. Um, some of them may be trivial, some of them may be less trivial, some of them may be a reminder, and that's the whole purpose of this. So I'm not trying to bring a new message to the world. I'm just trying to, to tell you based on the years that I've been doing it, and I will you know, introduce myself properly in a minute, um, you know, what I've seen other investors doing, and I've learned you know, learning by watching how investors behave and what helps them and what you know, what brings them closer to success and helps them succeed and what kind of hold, holds them back. Okay. So my name is Danny Bittor. Um, I'm based in Southern California. I have been a real estate investor, you know, who's been investing in the U.S. real estate, I should say, since 2002. In 2002, I purchased my first rental property outside of Phoenix, Arizona, when I still live in Tel Aviv, Israel, a young engineer in a high-tech company, you know, corporate, uh, uh, corporate world, uh, making good income, just not happy at all, far from it, with what I'm seeing in front of me, okay? What I was seeing is a lot of the people that I know, my parents, my uncles, my older cousins, my, friend, my, my parents' friends, they're all following, most of them were all pretty much following the same protocol, the same program. Finish your studies, which I did, move into a corporate world or, or some other, you know, other uh, type of line of work and work, 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 work. And then I looked at my parents and I'm like, they've been working their, you know, their butts off for the past 15, 20 years, three kids, and, you know, a condo with, with, with a mortgage and nothing, I mean, you know, and, and kind of challenge and nothing more to show. The, for all that effort that they did, or all those long 15, 20 years of working, long hours, I barely saw them, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I, they, they always missed on, on, they were always working or working a lot. I barely saw them during the day and during the evenings, you know, maybe sometimes they come in late. You know, for me as a kid, it was normal, right? But when I was an adult, I looked at where my, where I was already heading, right? Starting to go to corporate world, and I was not happy with it. I, I told myself, you know, and nothing, to, nothing bad to say about all those people, my, my parents, their friends, etc. all good people, all hardworking people, but I just did not agree with this formula of work, 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 and, you know, and, you know, and, and pretty much give up on the, uh, on the uh, you know, the family life. That didn't, I didn't really like that. So I decided to do something about it. That was my aha moment. That was my warning sign. I didn't know what the answer is at the time, but what I did know is I don't, at the time I knew what I don't know. I didn't know when I was 25, 26, you know, I was um, after three years in the service, in the military, you know, getting four years of my, my engineering degree. At the time, I, w I knew one thing. I knew that I don't know how to, uh, to get to a, uh, uh, to, um, uh, you know, wealth very quickly, overnight or almost overnight success. I had no idea how to do it at the time. Um, I, you know, I, did, I still think it's a very hard thing to accomplish. And very quickly, I gave up that dream of a get rich quick kind of a dream. I gave up on it very quickly. I decided that if I don't know how to go to accomplish the get rich quick kind of a, a method, which I didn't, 
I went into the alternative, which for me was let's go into how to get rich slow kind of a method, which I'm still pursuing to this day. I think that works. So I decided to follow that, that avenue. Since then, and I started by investing in real estate, U.S. real estate. I bought, you know, one property, then I did another little investment, and a second, you know, and a third little investment. And then in 2004, I moved to the States with my wife, you know, with a clear purpose to pursue real estate full time, both, you know, or, you know, initially just for my own sake, but over time I saw that, you know, I can help others to, to accomplish exactly the same. So nowadays, I, you know, I used to live uh, for 10 years in the San Francisco Bay Area and, uh, you know, work still, you know, still very much active there. And now I'm in Southern California. I work with investors. I help others invest. I hold meetings on a daily basis. We help investors who live in expensive places such as the Bay Area and, 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 and New York, Boston, um, different parts of California, Seattle to buy rental properties and flip properties in different parts of the country. We just help them facilitate the transaction. We simplify it, you know, for investors. That's what Simply Do It is all about. Um, I, I have been investor myself in multiple states over the years, just as my own sake. Uh, you can see the list: Arizona, Oklahoma, Florida, Texas, Arkansas, Alabama, North Carolina, Georgia, Idaho, Utah. What am I missing? Um, maybe missing Illinois. Um, probably missing one or two. That's just my own portfolio. We've been to other states over the years as well. My focus has always been, as an investor, single family homes, residential and primarily single family homes. Although I've done a little bit of land, some commercial, some tax liens, but those are definitely less than 5% of what I've done you know, activity-wise. Um, over the years, one of the things I'm very enriched by is following or helping or being involved in other, you know, other investors' process, guiding them through, mentoring, directing, helping, kicking in the butt sometimes to help them move, you know, take action if sometimes that's needed in order to execute in actual investment, actual investment. So I'm very much, you know, my company and myself are very much focused and oriented on execution, application, and not just education for the sake of education. So that's been my record, you know, uh, background. Um, over the years, I have been uh, involved or supported the transaction of over 3,500 uh, properties, uh, about a hundred flips, and um, multiple sales as well. I can, you know, I, you know some, at some point you stop uh, counting, so probably much much smaller number of uh, uh, selling properties, maybe three, four hundred. Um, you know, others and mine as well. There's always something going on. Right now, for example, we have multiple closings happening this week by our investors in multiple markets. Uh, we have. Uh, about 22, 23 flips going on as we speak. Some are still in work. Some are just getting started. One is we're closing in a month. Uh, some are listed for sale, at different stages. Some are having challenges. You know, it's all, never a dull moment here. So that's what we are all about, what we do day in, day out. Now, I'm going to divide this uh, um, uh, um, you know, uh, class tonight into two main parts. First part is what I call the investment environment. This is things that are typically beyond our uh, immediate control. Uh, controlling, you know, we cannot affect them. We can, you know, uh, use them. Some, of, many of those things you will know very well. So I just want to remind them. For me, it's the important, you know, but but uh, less significant for the sake of this class. The second part is more about you, what you can do in order to help yourself. So two parts, and then some tips and suggestions towards the end, and we'll take some questions. So let's talk about what I call the investment environment. Number one, okay, what I call the, you know, trivial but important. All of those items, you know, I think we have eight or nine items on this part, trivial but important. Let's go uh, over them one by one. I'm probably gonna quickly go through them. Number one, we all heard, you know, the, the, the phrase location, location, location. It was true 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's still very much true. I don't think much needs to be, to be said about it. Um, what I see some investors that are doing, they are sometimes attracted to cheap properties, which you, when you buy cheap properties, it seems really good on cash flow, but the noise level you will have from that type of property just to express the point of location is high. I'm an investor who's very attracted to I want boring investment, at least for the rentals. I want as boring as possible. To get as boring as possible, 
you know, location comes very, very important. Um, and I can tell you, yes, we have noise, ownership noise, you know, with, uh, you know, when, where, when we own rental properties, but it's much less hustle or noise or issues or stress in the rental properties when we are selecting good areas. The, the, you, you know, this is such a cliche and such a true uh, uh, um, um, parameter or uh, ingredient. Um, it's only after you really see how one doesn't work that you come to appreciate this one. So location, 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 trivial. You know, you, everybody probably heard about it, but still very important. Number two, finding the right deal. Okay, so looking close and finding the right deal and finding the right house. You know, again, trivial, but very, very important to make sure you're analyzing, you're looking for the right deal. Sometimes you have to exercise some patience and that's fine. You know, use that. Don't rush in. That's okay. Find the right deal for you. Every deal and every owner has a different match. What I consider a good deal for me is not necessarily the good deal for you and vice versa. So you got to remember this. Sometimes people tell me, what do you, where do you invest? What do you do? I will tell you. But you know what? It's not important because what I do as a person, as an investor, as risk you know, tolerance, as budget, as challenges is different than you, let's say, the beginner. So don't ask me what I'm doing because it's not going to necessarily help you. It may even frustrate you or actually cause the, you know, the opposite effect. It's not that I'm doing something crazy, but I may go about it a little bit different than a beginner, for example, would go about it. So finding the deal, very, very important. Having a team. You guys, so important, right? I told you, trivial but important. The right agent, the right agent that will support me in this type of transaction, the right property manager. For example, most of the property managers I work with do not touch the cheap houses. They tell me if, that, if any house that rents below $900 or $750, whatever this market, we don't want to deal with this type of, of, of area of tenants out of the question. So some of them will say, you know what, we're very good at dealing with this type of properties. We don't touch this type of properties, whatever that type is. I have a, you know, a property manager who says, no, I'm actually very good at doing, you know, and handling lower end type of properties, cheaper, you know, rent. Yes, we are set up for it. The system is set up for it. We are good at it. You, you know, we can help you with that if that's what you want to do. I don't, but I'm just saying as an example. So really important to have to have the right team in place, have a team, property manager, good lender, trustworthy lender, agent, the right agent for the niche you're looking for, right? Um, make sure they're experienced. All of, you know, insurance person, all of those are really important you know, aspect when, um, when considering, um, um, you know, when I call a team, maybe other parameters, those are the main ones. So team is important. Not just a team, the right team. Buying low, selling high, always, always a true thing, right? Always, always a challenging uh, to, to spot, you know, where are we in the cycle? Are we buying low now or buying high now? You know, it's very, very important. Obviously, you know, we all want to buy, you know, buy low and sell high, no doubt. It's hard to, to ID that point. Remember that also, it's not just about buying low and, 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 or, or buying high. It's also where are you in the cycle if you can identify sometimes you can be at the same price point, but either on the up curve, which usually means it's a seller's market. So if, as a buyer, I am, you know, I'm in a weak position, but on the down curve, which is the same price point, you can see those two arrows here on the screen. It's pretty much the same price point, but this, when it's declining, it's probably turning into a, a buyer's market. Same price, you know, two different, you know, mindset of the market. So very important to remember that. Uh, don't try to make, a science out of timing the market. Try to make sense of what you're buying. You know, you can buy in this market, you know, and, uh, um, opportunities. Every market presents opportunities. We're, we're gonna have another slide about that. Um, make sure you do your due diligence thoroughly on the property, on the analysis, on the area, you know, on the market. You know, if you work by yourself, it's gonna be hard. If you have a team, it will be easier. If you have like a network like ours, it will be much easier because we do a lot of those things anyway. And we make sure you know what to do as well. So those are important things, you know, to do properly. Again, we are at the 
trivial but important, right? Um, which market are you in? Are you in a buyer's market or a seller's market? Obviously, you know, are you a buyer in a buyer's market or seller in a seller's market or vice versa? Again, trivial, important to remember. Um, you just need to know that in any type of market, even if this is a seller's market and you're a buyer, which is not really the place where you would want to be, there are always opportunities. You just need to know how to work the market in your favor. Some markets are more challenging, some are less challenging. I just want you to know, even in today's market, which we are in many metros around the country, you are very much in a seller's market with high demand and low inventory, we are still able to find opportunities. Sometimes it's how we go about it, sometimes it's who is going about it in terms of the team, and that makes you know, a huge difference you know, um, as well, of course. Okay, um, sorry for the delay. Just wanted to make sure the recording is up. I apologize. Um, the, um, the other thing that I see, I always mention it, but a lot of investors do not take the time to do that. Is what I call the uh, investment criteria. It's very important that you as an investor will take five to 10 minutes, probably five is enough, and you outline what are you looking for? What is, I see it as, ask yourself the following question. If this, you know, what will make me buy this, a property, not this, but a property, you know, the purchase price, schools, what, what kind of schools you're looking for, what kind of age, square footage, um, cash flow, metro, rent, purchase price ratio, ROI, one car garage, no car garage, two car garage, three car garage, right? All of those questions, maybe more. Ask yourself, outline it. Take five minutes to kind of say, okay, if I am seeing this property and it meets all those criteria, maybe five, six, seven, eight of them, even three, whatever makes sense to you, and I see a property and it matches, good, go for it, absolutely. You know, a lot of investors, they just being a herd. Oh, I like this property, it's beautiful. Who cares? Of course I care. I want a beautiful property, but I wouldn't want to make a decision and I wouldn't want you to make a decision just because a property is beautiful. So that's not a, not good enough of a reason. So keep that in mind, set, you know, take the time, set the criteria, help, you know, kind of outline it. You don't have to make it the perfect property. It's, it's gotta be the minimum, you know, rough or the minimum uh, um, uh, bar for you to accept the property. What would be the oldest? What would be the smallest in square footage? What would be the smallest in bedrooms, etc.? And anything that exceeds that, that's a good sign. Anything that below that, you know, or doesn't meet that, that maybe it should tell you, you know what, I should not even touch that property. Five minutes of your time, it's, you know, quick five minutes, significant, you know, a very important thing to do that many don't. When you are looking at an investment properties, I want you to think about the exit strategies based on what you, just exploring your mind. It's like a mental, a mental you know, uh, um, it's a mental game or mental exercise. If you are planning to sell the house quickly and you're not able to sell it, what are your options? If you are planning to rent the house and it's not renting quickly, what are your options, okay? Just make sure you explore as a mental exercise one to four options to do should things do not go according to the plan. It's important to know that you have those options, right? Because sometimes when you think, okay, for example, uh, you know, I want to rent it, but I can, uh, um, you know, I can always lower the rent. Well, check how much, you know, would be the lowest rent you would, uh, you would uh, accept in order not to be in a, in a jam, right? So those are the type of things. When you think about exit strategies, you also think, okay, what do I need to do, to do in order to make sure that exit strategy is applicable, is, you know, is real, is realistic to the type of investment I'm doing. You don't have to explore every possible, but just have, have at least one, if not three, alternatives. When things don't go according to the plan, what can you do, okay? So it's good, ment you know, mental exercise as a prep. Sometimes that leads for more questions and then you are more prepared for it or maybe do a little bit more analysis, then you can be more confident about your transaction or, not, and then you decide not to do it. But those are the things I wanted to say, what I call the investment environment. All of those things do not necessarily directly related to us. Now I wanna talk about you. 
Okay, I want to talk about things that are more within your control. So this is what I call your investment muscles. Everything I'm going to talk about now, I consider it a muscle because when we use that concept, idea, thought, etc., every time we use it, we're like training ourselves to do, to do, you know, to be better. By the way, as an investor, the fact that I'm always involved in buying or selling, I see it like a, you know, like a, like a, like type of a muscle. I'm not disconnecting from the activity. I'm always engaging. Buying, selling, looking, analyzing, it's like, it's, it's a muscle. I always train it. And, and you know what? I'm always shocked how many properties I've analyzed for flip, how many properties I've analyzed for rentals. And every once in a while, it's like, huh, I can do it. You know, this is maybe a little bit better way to look at it. I still learn. I still improve. I still do things a little bit better. I still engage with others and learn, for, learn from them. It's never, never, never stopped. And that's why I call it, uh, you know, an investment muscle. It never actually stopped. Number one on this list, we are on the second list, which is you or the ingredients that are related to you. Define your success. Don't go too abstract, right? Keep it simple. For example, in, in last year, 2017, mid-year, about a year ago, a new investor came on board and started working with us. He told me his goal, what he defined success, would be by the end of 2017 to own two rental properties. In November, Thing, you know, of last year, things were still not that certain he's going to own two properties. By the end of, uh, of December, he owned two properties. That He told me, he told himself, you know, that's what I would consider success. So he defined the success for him, and that's what he wanted. You see, simple. Own two properties by the end of the year. That's it. And he was very motivated to accomplish that, right? He, he's actually now on a path to own five more by the end of this year. He's, he, I actually asked him to slow down because it created some financial constraints on him. So he's actually in the process of buying three more. And once they settle, he may be able to buy two more by the end of this year. But we agreed that this would not define success owning five in this year for this year. So three would be a success, two would be a bonus. And if not, we're going to push two more to next year. It's just to alleviate some of the pressure, financial pressure it may cause him. So, we, he, you know, he, we kind of talked about it and decided to, to take it easy a little bit. So define your success. Simple. One rental property in the next three months. Something along those lines. Something easily man manageable, easily achievable, easily definable, not complicated, not, you know, keep it simple. The more simple it is, the easier it will be for you to accomplish it. Next, determination. I can tell you how that, that's important. We are in real estate. And in real estate, Things will not go according to the plan. Guarantee. I have it, you know, I, it happens to me every day. Every day, right? There's a new challenge. Every day, right? So be ready. Be ready. It will happen. But if you're determined, you're going to be knocked down, so to speak. You're going to be discouraged along the way. You're going to be surprised financially or not financially or for whatever reason or disappointed. It will happen. Life will happen. But that's where you, you can set things apart. If you're determined, you may be kind of one day downer and like not happy and not pleased. And the next day you wake up and say, all right, let's tackle this thing. This is a daily activity for me. I can't say that I in, in, in want it as a daily activity, but it's definitely something that happens every single day. There's a new challenge, right? Especially when you work on a very large scale. Obviously, uh, um, a lot of people, a lot of parties, a lot of teams, very challenging. So. This is something you need to understand. Determination is important. Don't get discouraged as, quick, you know, as soon as something negative or challenging you know, uh, um, comes up, because it will, and that's where the defining factor would be. Next point, and maybe the most critical point of everything, be focused, okay? Be focused. Don't let other things distract you. Put the blinders on. Why do I say that? If you are an entrepreneur or a real estate investor and you are trying to accomplish something on a daily basis or a weekly basis, you're probably going to be distracted by other opportunities, other possibilities, other things to do. And when you're shifting that focus, it's going to hurt your main effort. Okay. So sometimes we have to, you know, it's okay to tell other opportunities, no, not interested. I can tell you right now, just this week, I had at least two flip opportunities presented to me 
you know, you know, in a general, you know, kind of email for my, my teams. And in both cases, I told those both teams, one in Portland, one in Tampa. I said, look, guys, this is a very hectic week. I have a lot of things on my plate, you know, multiple issues that are, you know, major issues. I can't, you know, get distracted right now. I got to take care of those things. I can't put all the time and energy into, you know, into those flips, put them on the, on the back burner. If they're there next week, well, let's consider them. So that's what I call focus. Some investors, what I see, they're attending, you know, meetings in order to, you know, real estate meetings, like meetups. And they go and they get totally excited about a speaker who talks about self-storage. Perfect. Great. I love it. Let's do self-storage, right? And they decide to pursue it. And then for the following week, they absolutely focus on self-storage, only to discover a week later in another meeting, someone comes in and talks about, I don't know, multifamily, which is fine. It looks amazing. And then they completely shift their focus into multifamily. And the following week, it's another thing and maybe flipping and another week, you get the point, right? You lose focus. Focus will distract you from the, uh, um, from the, uh, um, um, you know, from the main, from the main uh, purpose or what you're trying to accomplish, no doubt. I have been in that situation. By the way, every time I talk about focus, I remind myself, stay focused, right? I still need that mental, you know, muscle of staying focused reminder to myself because I think it's very, very, very important and it can easily distract you by doing other things. So focus is so important. A lot of people, you know what? It's okay to say no to a deal you're not considering right now. It's amazing deal. Trust me, it's amazing deal. You know what? Okay. If it's there, maybe next week, maybe next year, I'll look into it. Right now, I'm focused, right? I've, I've had it happen many, many times in my life. Stay focused. It will help you. Okay. For those of you who are a little bit lost or those of you who are not lost but still not sure what to do next, find a mentor. Find a mentor in the niche of investing you want to accomplish. It could be me if that's what you're trying to do or it could be someone else. But it's very important that you do because a mentor will help you save money, save stress, stay focused, put you on the track, put you on the path. All of those good things will come in a package of a mentor. You can talk to that person, you can consult with that person, it's probably gonna cost you money, that's okay. Keep, you know, but this person most likely, if he or she are good, will help you stay, you know, keep the eyes, keep eyes on the balls and stay focused and on track and you can bounce ideas and you can, you know, have discussions and it will most likely, if this person is good, he or she will help you move to the next level or to the next tier or to whatever, or, or overcome the, you know, any or many of the obstacles that you have. Not all the mentors have, I don't have, as a mentor, I don't have the answers all the time, but sometimes just by discussing, suggesting, trying to figure out what to do, we come up with an idea as a solution. That really, really helps. I think it's, if you can have that person in your life, it's well worth it. It will save on issues, troubles, stress, etc. So find that mentor, you know, and make sure that person fits your niche. If you want to do commercial properties, go right ahead. Don't come to me for help because I'm not in that niche. I wouldn't want to help you in something that I cannot support you. If you want to do rentals out of state, hey, I'm possibly your guy or someone else. I, you know, it's really, you know, I'm not try, trying to pro, self-promote, just the whole point. Find a mentor. It's so, so important. People just take it for granted or what's the value and what's the value. I hear that. No, what's your value? I've done it 3,500 times, right? 3,500, you know, real estate transactions. You don't think I'm going to have a little bit of value to help you, right? I have worked with investors on so many levels, beginners, experience. You know, you don't think I'm going to have a little bit of experience. You know, you don't, you think you know everything. I don't know everything. Let me tell you a little story. Two years ago, I meet with this couple, right? He's a super nice, funny, you know, kind of a guy. And she's very kind of business minded, very kind of, you know, kind of, kind of very strict. And we sit down and, and we talk. And very clear, quickly in the conversation, I see she's kind of taking over the conversation very aggressively and start dictating like what the conversation is going to be about. And every minute that goes by, she tells me, Danny, I've bought a condo locally and I know how to manage that. 
So I don't really understand how you can help me if I've already purchased one condo in my life. And like very quickly, I, I thought that she's going to be, not only that she's going to be, uh, 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 she thinks she knows all, she's going to be challenging to work with. So very quickly, I kind of scared back and said, that's not a person I want to work with, right? Not on my, you know, not in my world because I am humble enough to admit after 3,500 transactions more actually over a period of about 15 years, right? I still, I'm still a student of real estate. I still learn. A, because I haven't learned everything. B, market change, things change, you know, around us. So just come up with a, I think that if I would come say, I know everything, like, no, no, I wouldn't want to attract to a person who says that. I don't even want to engage with the person who says that. So that's just very, you know, that was very, uh, uh, you know, eye-opening. A, you see somebody you don't want to work with, and B, you really think you know everything? Really? You know, even my investors, when I talk to them, they say, you know what, it's a good question. I don't know. I need to think about it. Let's talk about it tomorrow again. So keep that in mind. But you know what? Find that mentor. It will save you a lot, much more. And don't be so, uh, you know, kind of people like, oh, do we really need it? You know what? I'll tell you a secret. All the investors I work with can do it by themselves. Okay? Honestly. But what I like best is when they tell me, Danny, I, I had a conversation like this with a, with, a, with a new investor, first house, you know, guy from Boston. I call him yesterday, say, you know, he closed on his house yesterday. I give him a call. I say, thank you for be, doing business with us. And thank you for picking us. And thank you for, for you know, and I really appreciate it. And I, I have some pointers. I have some things I want to share with you uh, at this stage. And he says, Danny, before you move forward, I want to say something. I want to thank you. I said, of course. Yeah, thank you. Sure. He says, no, no, no. Listen, I have... I could probably do it by myself, but the fact that I knew you were there to analyze properties with me in the first time, first one or two, one or two times, and then show me the ropes and tell me who to work with and which market, and give me some pointers and suggestions along the way. You know, it was a lot. You know, a lot of those pointers and suggestions along the way, and I always had someone that I can talk to, run things by, suggest. He said, "You know what? Yes, I could do it by myself, but the fact that I have a person that I can always ask and consult." and feel confident. You actually gave me from your confidence and that really helped me execute. So I think one of the main reasons I, I'm now an owner of a rental property, a lot of it is me, but a lot of it is because I had you on, on my side. And he says, and for that, I'm really thankful because I knew how much, I've tried to do it by myself for a long time before we started working. Obviously I didn't succeed. You actually gave me, you, you kind of shared with me your confidence to go ahead and do that. And for that, he was very thankful and we continued our conversation. That and of course for me that's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish personally. When someone tells me that, I'm like I'm all you know I'm all excited. I'm all goosebumps because that tells me this is what I'm trying to do. And this guy is telling me you know that I've done it. So it's it's really good to hear and, and good to know. Next thing I want to say is about you know about your what we call the gut decision. Okay. Now I am not a very firm believer that everything is a gut decision, right? We all have that. What I'm a firm believer is that when we analyze, when we take information in, when we get educated on a deal, when, do, when we do all the due diligence, whatever the, the quantity, quality, all of it, in a way we feed our gut. This means the concerns that we have, the fear that we have, the, you know, the, the understanding of risk you know, that's involved. That is for me the gut so to say, the gut decision. So all this activity, exercise of analyzing and chatting and talking and asking and, you know, and finding more information leads to that point that, okay, you know what? After I've done a lot of analysis on this transaction, I feel good about it. I know I'm okay with it. Yes, there's risk, but I'm more okay with it now because I educated, so to speak, my gut. So it's okay to work with your gut, but you know what? Do yourself a favor. Don't trust it blindly. Feed it. Think about your gut as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, you know, as a internal, internal uh, uh, analysis, you know, decision maker engine, right? And in order to use that, you gotta feed it with information. So do that. That's okay, you know. And when you do that, your gut will, will probably tell you, okay, I'm okay with this. I feel comfortable. The gut is the, is the one that tells you, risk here, careful, careful, there's risk here. Or you know what, that's actually okay. Or be a little bit conservative here, be a little aggressive here. That's fine. That's what I call, you know, the gut feeding in order to make that 
gut decision everybody talks about, okay? Um, very important, very hard to accomplish is confidence, right? A lot of the investors, beginners or even experienced lack the confidence, right? I don't blame them. That's what we do. We try to share the confidence, to, to empower you from our confidence. We can't replace it, but we're trying to, you know, to help you with that. But, you know, your confidence will only come from one place, only from execution, application, investing, and so on. Okay. Now I, I've been in a, a, I've had an event maybe two years ago, a year ago. I can't remember exactly. Right. And there was a lady sitting here that was in Orange County it was a lay, nice lady sitting there. And she said, Danny, you know what? We've been through the crash. We purchased a few properties, me and my husband, and we actually have been through the, uh, you know, through the crash. And we, you know, we barely survived it. It was really tough. You know, some, some things worked better. Many things didn't work good. And I'm just coming back into real estate. And I'm not even sure. I'm hesitant, right? I'm lacking the confidence. That's what she says, in other words. And I told her, listen, obviously you're here. You're thinking it's still a possibility, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. But more importantly, take, you know, you and your husband, she was, she, you know, he was not there. Go home. Just put a list together. What worked well? What didn't work well, right? Do that exercise with yourself. You are in a much better position than a beginner because you've had that experience. You had good experience and negative experience. Use that. Leverage that. Don't let it go to waste. Actually say, based on that exercise of, of understanding what worked well and what didn't work well, make your next investment or your next decision, right? It will feed. You still have, lack the confidence at first, but don't let that experience good or bad go to loss if you're thinking real estate is still the right thing if you think real estate is a you know it's not for you that's okay don't you know don't do it but if you think there's still a possibility you owe it to yourself you are in a much better position so to, to do that so confidence is important confidence will only come when you get more educated on one hand but when you actually execute if you're going to stay on the sideline you always going to be lacking the confidence. And I'll tell you one other secret. If you think for a second that even me doing so many transactions over my career is lacking the confidence or always 100% confident on every deal, you are wrong. Every house that I buy, I'm always concerned. There's always like something in me like, okay, did we do, did we check everything? Is everything okay? I, you know, I've, I'm, I'm never a hundred percent. There's always, that's the unknown. That's the risk, obviously. So it's, it's, I, it's, I, I like it because it's like a health check, but you know what? That's definitely a part of it. So don't think for a second, Oh, this guy, you know, I've done so many deals. I have been involved. I'm a hundred percent confidence. Nope. Nope. I wish maybe, but in a way I, I like it the way it is because that tells me I'm still, you know, kind of something, you know, like a little voice is watching over. Okay, so don't think, you know, just because someone is doing all those deals is have no confidence. Yes, I'm probably more confident than many others, but I still, you know, can't say I'm always 100%. I always have my doubts. I always have concerns. Obviously, that comes with the territory. Next thing I want to say is the support system, right? So we spoke earlier on teams and that's, I'm saying that because it's important. The support system is what you surround you with in order to help you succeed from lenders to property managers to realtors to a mentor right and to actual support system like i said you know like a crm system or some other or an excel um you know tracking uh, tools all of those things they're actually building your support system so it's people and tools that will help you support you in this process throughout the process so make sure you build that correctly it doesn't have to be perfect Start with one thing and then slowly add more or improve or engage. That's okay. You don't have, you don't have to make everything perfect on day one. It's not going to happen, right? You're going to make it as good as you can for that point and then slowly say, you know what? That works for me. That doesn't work. I'm using this analysis Excel. It's not good. I want to use something else. I created my own using this tool, that tool. This person is good for that type of investment. This person, that's what I call support system, okay? Don't try to perfect it from the get-go, you will slowly perfect it over time. I am still improving my rental processes and system, which, you know, it's a platform, I call it. 
and you know and the improvement steps on the rental side of our business is slower because we really have done you know a lot of work over the years and I can tell you when it comes to the flips I still feel that I have at least 20 percent if not 25 percent room for improvement right a lot of room for improvement I still have to do a lot of things I've done about 100 flips and I still feel that I'm lacking some areas that I need to improve on no doubt no doubt in my mind so just keep that in mind um, and don't don't aim to have everything perfect on day one it's not going to happen have it aim to have a good enough support system. Now, this is something that you could probably help yourself by, by, by taking a few minutes and saying, okay, let me literally write down what I think are my strengths and my weaknesses, okay? And then try to make decisions or choose investments or go about it in that way. So for example, if you are do not like confrontation, okay? Maybe you should use a property manager and not manage the properties by yourself. Just an idea, okay? Let someone else handle the confrontation, right? So you kind of outsource the confrontation, for example. Um, if you are not good with analyzing rental properties, for example, find someone that will help you do that. Maybe if you even pay them a few bucks, right? So for example, I can tell you, for me, running a or V after repair value or, or running comps analysis is a very challenging thing, right? I do it well, but it's super challenging. So every time I sit down and it takes me easily two to three hours per property, right? Just to do that. You know, it's a very, you know, time consuming exercise uh, to come up with the correct ARV. Every time it's like, maybe I can outsource to someone else who will do it you know, it will cost me money, but maybe they are better at it. Maybe they can do it more professionally. I don't know. I still haven't found, but it's definitely something I'm looking into because maybe that will actually save me three hours and they may even do a better job than I am, possibly. So it's always a challenge, always a challenge. Just to give you an example. So I am not saying this is a complete weakness, but I definitely can say, oh, this is one of my strengths, okay? I like, you know, I'm doing it well, but I'm, you know, I'm always questioning myself, are you doing it? well enough or good enough, right? It's always a challenge. They're probably not never gonna be you know, a right or wrong answer. You know? I'll just give you an example. So take the time, say, you know what? You should probably, you probably know where, what things you're good with and what things you're not so good with and everything you're not, let someone else do it. You know, for example, I was really bad at accounting years back. I sucked, man, I sucked, I was really bad, right? I mean, not that bad, but that wasn't good. You know, I hated it. It was always daunting. Easy. CPA, account, you know, you know, an accountant or bookkeeper, done. He is doing a far better job than I am. He's more efficient in it. He's okay with it. I hated it. Things are completely different, right? Right away, I moved it away. So just to give you, I, you know, and I'm so thankful, thankful that I did, right? Every time I see that something that I don't like doing, or I'm annoyed, or it takes too much time, or maybe someone else can do it better than me, can I find someone else to do it for me, right? Sometimes for a bigger fee, a smaller fee, but I'm definitely understanding, realizing. And it's not a simple task, but I'm realizing, can I, can I, can I push it to someone else, right? That's something that, that, um, that could work. Ask yourself, you know, it's easy to spot. When you're really hating to do a task, that's a, a good time to ask yourself, maybe someone else can do it for me. Okay. Now, one thing that I think we sometimes investors are not doing enough is I call it greed or greedy. Greedy is a negative word. Really, people like uh, greedy is a disgusting word. Everybody hates it. But you know what? I, I want to tell you something. I think that being greedy to a point is actually a good thing. I envy some of my investors that are, I would call them greedy or greedier than me. Because I'm not very greedy, at least I don't think that I am. And sometimes I wish I would be a bit more greedy, right? I want more. I want to fight more for mine. I want to be, you know, I really like some of my investors who are aggressive about it. And I understand where it's coming from. And I wish I would be a little bit more. I don't want to be, I, I don't like working with people or engaging with people that are super greedy and it's, you know, blinding them. That's bad. For me, that's bad. But just by being a little bit in position that you want more or you want to get more out of a deal, for me, that makes perfect sense. You're not being, you know, 
greedy bastard. You're just being a little bit greedier for your own sake. You, you deserve it. I deserve it. Everybody deserve it. It's fine. So be, it's okay. It's okay. Be a little bit greedy. You know, don't be a jerk you know, or, or a bad person. Just be a bit greedy. That's fine, at least in my, in my mind. Let's recap all the points that we cover, and then we'll take some questions if we have. Okay, we talked about the trivial stuff. Location, location, location. You know, finding the deal, having the right team in place and the right team for your investment, buying low, selling high, doing full and proper due diligence, knowing the market, setting up your investment criteria, and making sure you had some mental or exercise about exit strategies should things do not go according to the plan because there's a very good chance they will not. Not necessarily go catastrophically, but maybe not according to your plan. So at least you've been through some thinking process about what happens when things do not go according to the plan. Then we talked about the investment muscle. So we talked about defining success, be simple. Buy one rental by the end of the year. That's it, simple, right? Um, then be determined. Remember, things will not go according to the plan. And when you get and it's courage and you're you know you're not seeing the vision that's when you're lacking the determination and it will make you not do the right thing or kind of slow you down then always be focused say no to deals that are not up your investment you know kind of you know within your success uh, horizon right it's okay don't worry about it other deals will present themselves so it's okay to stay focused on the deal or deals you want to do and blocking things that do not match your criteria, your definition of what you're trying to accomplish. Focus, focus, focus. This is more than location, location, location. It's focus, 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 okay? Find a mentor in your niche. Whatever you decide to do, find a mentor in that niche and stick to them. They will help you overcome obstacles. They will you know, probably have path or processes and systems in place. Someone you can run ideas, someone you consult with, brainstorm pick their brain, all of the above, maybe even they'll help you get unstuck, which happens to many people. It's not just for beginners, right? Every investor is facing challenges which are different at different stages of your investments in your life. Different challenges when you're buying your first one or two, then when you're buying your four, five, six properties, then when you're reaching 10 properties, different challenges. A mentor, Will mo a good one will most likely help you overcome those challenges, obstacles, etc. So that's important. Remember, your gut tells you a lot what to do. So instead of just trusting your gut, feed your gut with the information so you can have a better gut decision. I'm not saying no to gut decision. I'm saying I want to. I want my gut to be more educated to make that gut decision. Okay, can you remember that. Confidence is very challenging to have when you don't have the experience. You will probably go into investing or start out without, you know, lacking some or a lot of confidence. You can overcome that by two ways. One, do a deal, your, conf you know, your confidence will go up. Do another deal, your confidence will go up, etc. Or you actually take some confidence or, or suck some confidence from the mentor you work with and they will help you, you know, kind of, you will kind of piggyback their own confidence to a certain extent. It will help you some. A good mentor can help you with the confidence when you're lacking, right? It's not going to re completely replace it, but could, can help you. Make sure you have a support system, the realtors, the agents, etc. all of those teams, plus systems in place, processes in place, um, tools, online tools, Excel, all those things. doesn't have to be complicated. Just make sure you have that kind of system in place. It will help you make decisions. It will help you run smoothly. It will help you analyze properly. This is what I call a support system. Very, very important as well. And of course, try to identify your strengths and weaknesses. A good rule of thumb, if something you hate to do, it's probably a weakness, so to speak. Or you know what? Even if it's not a weakness, just maybe a time-wasting kind of a, a activity, send it out, let someone else deal with it, right? Go outsource it, do, you know, pay a little, it will save you a lot, right? So it will help you with the focus and you shifted some of the annoying things to someone else, annoying to you, okay? Such as accounting in my case. And remember, it's okay to be a bit greedy. Try not to be too greedy. A little bit greedy will, will kind of, will probably help you go, you know, a, a bit longer. So that's uh, uh, one thing that don't think of greedy as a bad word. Think about it as something you can use 
if you're not abusing it, okay? Use but not abuse. Okay, two suggestions. One, if you are floating there and you're a little bit hesitant and you're not sure what to do, and you know, maybe a good thing to go about investing, beginners or experience, is find that investment buddy. One investment buddy, not buddies, one. When you have an investment buddy, you can bounce ideas, you can talk, you can chat, you can hold each other accountable. I actually act as, a, as a, an investment buddy to a lot of uh, my investors because they are lacking that. Um, but if you don't want to use a mentor or you're not sure, or even with a mentor, every time I see more than one, you know, like a, a team of two that are friends usually that are working together, I see a greater opportunity for success because they're kind of, you don't have to buy together, but you walk the path together. Try not to find an investment buddy that want to do commercial when you want to do self-storage, right? I don't, that's not what I mean. But if you want to do what self-storage and you find another, another person who wants to do self-storage, that's a good buddy to find. Then you can actually kind of explore the path together. Maybe you kind of make sure you're going through the steps together. You may end up, it's probably better, each owning their own property. No problem. Just go about it. Uh, uh, together, it will help. And the other thing we talked earlier, set up your minimal threshold investment criteria. For example, if you're buying a rental, a rent, a rental house, the smallest number of bedrooms, the smallest number of square feet, this, the, the, you know, the minimum age of the house, you know, the year bill, uh, two car garage, one car garage, schools, etc. Set it up. Take five minutes, and then when prop, when you start evaluating properties, it's easier to see this property matches or exceeds my criteria, I should consider it. And this property is not as good, you know, does not match. It's actually um, uh, um, inferior to my investment criteria. Toss it out. Don't, don't waste a second on it. All right? Toss it out. So it helps you to stay focused on the relevant ones. Two small things, but will help you, you know, significantly. Lastly, before we start wrapping up, I want to say this. You want to think about it starting with why you're doing it. What are the reasons you're doing it? And not what you should be doing. Because when you start with the why, it tells you, it kind of gives you the vision. Why am I investing in real estate? What is driving me to invest in real estate actually? And not sit at home and do nothing. Why are you here tonight, so to speak, right? What's the whole point? When you know the why, you can go about how, to do it and then what? For example, why am I want to invest? How I should go about investing? And what should I buy? Most people say, start with the what and they lose track. The minute things will become challenging, the first minute and you don't know the why, you will immediately lose focus and, you know, and, and steer out of track. No doubt in my mind, okay? Take the time to think about the why, you don't have to stick to the fancy, I want to be, you know, sometimes I go to those events and you know, I want to be spending more time with your family and go on vacations and vacation. I think this is a cheap sales pitch. I know my why. Do you know why, you know, your why? And if you know, if you don't, ask yourself. Take a few minutes. Once you know the why, it will be the top of your list here. And when things get tough, which they will, the why will remind you, you know what? So it's vacant right now. No big deal. It's annoying. Remember why I'm doing it. Big picture, small picture. When your house is sitting vacant or your property manager tells you, you know, there's a, another repair for $500 unexpected and you're like freaking out, then I'm going to tell you, shut up for a second. Remember why you're doing it. Don't worry about the vacancy at the moment. Don't worry about the $500. The bigger picture is important. The why will tell you the bigger picture. A lot of people just go straight to the what. They're missing the point. Start with the why, go to the how, like why am I buying, why am I investing, how I should go about it, what should I buy? That will help you tremendously. Just a quickly about us. So we are obviously simply do it. We are doing long-term uh, long buy and hold residential rentals in Nashville, Dallas, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Indianapolis, Tampa, and even Orlando. So that's what we do on one hand, that's one investment you know, program. The second investment program we do residential flips, buy, renovate, and sell in Tampa, Indianapolis, and Chicago. Actually, we started in Kansas. We have our first property in Kansas purchased on Friday. 
Um, and we're also attempting to buy, we haven't purchased it in Portland. So Portland is ready. We have just been under four fives for the past month. We probably went under contract at least four to five times, but every time it ended up not being a good uh, proposition and we uh, terminated. So unfortunately, good market, just not enough margin. So we are, this is what we do. We focus on mainly those two investment programs with investors. So that means investors are coming to us and saying, I want to buy a rental property in a different state because here it's super expensive, but where should I go? Who should I work with? Who can I trust? How should I get a mortgage? All those obstacles, challenges, questions, concerns, that's where we come in and try to, not try to help overcome, you know, create that help with the why, answer about the what, right? Right here. Help with the why sometimes if we need to. Most people know that by the time they get to us. Answer with the how and definitely go with, with the what to buy, okay? So that's just exactly following that. Same thing with the rent, with the flips. It's exactly just, a, you know, it's a complementary. We see those programs are two supplementary programs, you know, to one another. Now, if you are watching this and you want to, you know, have a conversation with us, we're going to make it free. We're not going to charge you anything. We do it one-on-one, -on -one, either in person, if you're in Southern California, by phone or by Skype. Most of, our meet most of my meetings are by phone because I work with investors all over the country, actually in other countries as well. So you just have to go online to simplydoit.net forward slash intake and fill out the investment, you know, uh, uh, the, the quick two, three minutes, uh, you know, a questionnaire. We call it a, a, um, it's a, it's a meeting preparation for both of us. You're going to be prepared. It's going to ask you a few questions, nothing personal, no, no credit card, no uh, uh, social security, nothing like that. Just a few questions to make sure, you know, you are giving it some thoughts. Um, and we are, and we can get it, we review it, we make sure, you know, it makes sense. It helps me to come more ready and prepare for the meeting. And then we hold up and hold the meeting, you know, um, 30 minutes or so, we're not gonna time you. It's an opportunity for review your questions or answer your question, review your concerns, answer some of your, you know, your, you know, maybe address some of your obstacles, all of those things, that's what we do. It's not a sales pitch. It's completely an opportunity for me to maybe be a bit quieter and respond to you. I like it when people come to those meetings and they say, here's what we wanna accomplish. Not what you wanna accomplish, Danny, what we want to accomplish in this meeting because it's about us and that's what I really like because it is about you. It's not about me. I'm investing. So I really want to make it about you and help you and be engaged in your, in your journey. Hopefully, um, always going to try and do the best for you. That's what we are hoping for, aspiring for, for our investors. Um, and the meeting is all about that. It's just to kind of to make sure we're on the same page that it makes sense. Okay. I'm not going to offer you any product boot camps and stuff like that. Here's our contact information. You're most welcome to review, um, to uh, access those uh, we the websites for the blog for information, simplydoit.net. Email us at meet at simplydoit.net. reistart.com is a website we use for uh, listing our different properties that we have or had recently. So it gives uh, you know, a little bit more substance with what, what we uh, talk about. With that said, I am done with my part if there are questions i'll take them um if you are watching on a recording you are most welcome to submit your questions through a comment or through the email or or go to the you know to the intake form at simplydoit.net and complete the intake and we will get in touch with you about setting up the meeting um that's it on my end any questions I'm gonna switch from here. I'm gonna, oh, you know what? I'm gonna check to see if there are any questions coming via email. Just in case. Okay. In that case, I want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time and uh, joining us on this. Um, 
One of my favorite uh, uh, classes, which is not actually investing per se, but um, how to help you be more successful with investing altogether. We are here to help you. We hope to hear from you soon, talk to you soon, meet with you soon. Um, in any event, I want to wish you uh, happy investing and tons of success, whatever type of investing you do. Thank you very much. Have a terrific rest of your day or um, rest of your night. And I hope to see and talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.